And you may have heard that you know, there are immune stresses in life. Hopefully you've, you've heard some of this before. But something that a lot of doctors are missing out there when they're talking to their patients, not all of them, but some of these doctors are missing out on the immune system. And what we've studied in great, great detail is your immune system. Now you may be aware of your white blood cells. You have red, red blood cells and white blood cells. And your white blood cells are what go out there and fight off infections like bacteria, or if you have a virus, the white blood cells go out there to fight. Or if you have a cut on your finger, the white blood cells go out there and fight bacteria that may get in your finger. And you get the little pussiness and the body heals itself, right? Well, in our, in our immune system, we have these specific white blood cells. There's one of them. Out of the five white blood cells, there's one of them called a lymphocyte. And the lymphocyte is the white blood cell that we, we all of the immune literature as of two, late 2009, shows that the lymphocyte is the key to understanding what's going on with your immune system. Because when you have different stresses in your body from the GI system to bacteria to parasites to reactions to food sensitivities, we can get an immune system flare up. So we run a specific test. So your peripheral neuropathy can be caused by an autoimmune condition. You don't have to have lupus. You don't have to have rheumatoid arthritis. You don't have to have uh, uh, some of these other autoimmune conditions that will cause your neuropathy. But what you've got to understand, even if they don't find a lupus antibody in your system, they're looking in the wrong place. You've got to look at specific immune panels. And we are able to categor categorize you as what we call a Th1 or Th2 dominant immune system. That is so important. Almost every single patient that comes into my practice with this neuropathy condition falls into either a Th1 or a Th2 immune problem. Th1 means T helper 1 or, or the T cells. These T cells are army cells that go out and attack and clean up after the fight is over. We have helper cells, we have suppressor cells, we have regulatory cells, and we have NKC means natural killer cells. These go out there and they're going out to fight the battle for you. We have Th2 cells. These are the B cells. The B, B cells make antibodies. Okay? And this is what helps to try to fight off what's going on in your system. But what happens when we, when we have a constant battle, let's say you have a sensitivity to a food called, uh, let's say it's uh, dairy, and when you drink a glass of milk, or you have some ice cream, or you have some yogurt, and you eat this food and it causes a stress in your intestinal system. Immediately, and we have research about this, immediately once those foods hit your intestines and you start to feel that bloating, cramping kind of feeling, your immune system, see your stomach and your intestines are sending a signal up to your brain that says, hey, something's wrong in here. We have an invader. I don't like what's going on inside. The brain says it thinks that there's an invader. There's a bacteria. It doesn't realize it's a food. It's a parasite or something. So it calls on the immune system to come out and destroy what's stressing it. So we get these immune cells that flare up. These are called cytokines, immune cytokines. Okay? We're going to look at those cytokines and be able to determine if you fall into the Th1 or Th2 immune problem. When those cytokines are, are flourishing and, and, and spreading throughout the body, those cytokines can start attacking or stressing different organs the liver, the pancreas, the brain. We've got to understand, we've got to keep those cytokines down. We have to find those cytokine inflammations, and that is one marker that we use in order to A, be able to understand what's causing your condition, and then be able to suppress that condition. But in order to be able to figure out how to suppress that condition, we've got to find out if you fall into a category of either an active antigen response that's going on, or immune dysregulation. So first thing we do with the immune system is we run cytokine tests. Second thing we do with the immune system testing is a specific blood test called a lymphocyte subpopulation analysis. And the lymphocyte subpopulation analysis will either tell me if you have an active antigen that's going on in your system or if your immune is just dysregulated, it doesn't know what to do. Again, an active antigen is parasite, bacteria, heavy metals, different foods, viruses, molds, things like this are the antigens. They are the invaders. They're the things that your body is constantly trying to fight off. But if you have a sensitivity and you're having a reaction to, let's say, dairy, for instance, 
Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know until they test. But if you're having a dairy response and you drink milk and have cereal and you're having ice cream and yogurt every day and cheese and pizza and cookies and crackers and donuts, what's happening is you're getting, a, you're getting blood sugar disorders in the body and you're having a constant, excuse me, a constant reaction to the dairy in your system. There's a protein in the dairy called casein. And if you're sensitive to the dairy or the gluten or eggs or soy or yeast, you're having a constant daily explosion, so to speak, of this stress in your system that will cause an antigen or active antigen response. We have to figure out what that is. So again, I go back, what I mentioned earlier, we run food sensitivity testing. We're able to exactly find out and pinpoint what is causing that act active antigen stress. The best indicator for this antigen or immune dysregulation is when we run this panel where we find out what's called a CD4 or CD8 ratio. When that ratio is in a certain narrow range within this nice little functional range, we know that's not the case. It's not going to be caused by this type of pattern. When we see that you're falling a little below that pattern, I know it's an immune dysregulation. When you fall a little above outside of that range, we know it's an active antigen response. Then we know exactly what we need to do to stop the stress on your immune system, which is stressing your, what did I say? The immune stresses the nervous system, stresses your endocrine system. Whenever the immune system's out of order, the nervous system's out of order. Whenever the nervous system's out of order, the hormonal system or the endocrine system's out of order. We do another test called an intestinal permeability test. And, in, and what you've got to understand is your intestines, imagine this, your intestines are tightly woven um, uh, linked fibers. When those fibers become stressed by an immune system flare up, by let's say there's a celiac disease in your intestines, a DNA type, where those intestines caused by food sensitivities like gluten those intestines actually break apart. Now you can see these holes between my fingers. And what happens is these little parasites, if there are, or bacteria or fungus or bad foods, because when we try to break down foods that we can't break down, we get this little morphine type substance that's left over in our intestines. And that gets through the intestine, through these holes, through a, what we call a leaky gut, a leaky gut through these holes and it gets in the bloodstream and it goes up into your brain. And when it gets up in the brain, it causes a neurological malfunction. And a neurological malfunction in the brain will cause neurological malfunction into the hands and feet. How does that happen, you may say? Well, whatever we eat goes up to the brain. You've got to understand that. There are specific parts of your brain, we'll get to in just a moment, but there's one specific part of your brain that has the sensory nerves that originate in the brain and then they go out to your hands and your feet. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So we check to see if there's a permeability problem or a leaky gut problem. And if there is, we're going to have to repair that so we can have our intestinal barrier system nice and tight so nothing can seep through there and get into the bloodstream to get up to the brain.